and welcome back to Granted Gardens. My name is Melissa and today, right now, you're in my cupboard. <laughs> um, so we've got a hodgepodge mix of things going on today and I wanted to grab the camera and take you guys along with me. So first and foremost, Mika's birthday is coming up here in a few days. And so one tradition that we've always done is get her a like puppy ice cream for her birthday. And I went looking everywhere for puppy ice cream and people aren't selling them anymore, not sure why. But I did eventually find some here that are available, but they're like non frozen. So it's like dry packaged and apparently all you have to do is add water. Never really tried this before, but this is what it looks like. Um, it came in a pack of four and so I'm gonna do two for now. And then we'll keep two for Shanti's birthday. So we open it up, kind of looks like this, it's pre-packaged. I figured that while I was out, I would try and pick this up. And so I'm glad I found something. I have made puppy ice cream, like puppy treats for her birthday before, but I've got a really busy week ahead of me, per usual, so I wanted something simple. So we'll try this out. So we'll let that sit in the freezer and it's going to be for a few days. I think it always says it has to be in there for about five hours, but something super special for a super special puppy's day. Next on the docket was our chicken waterer. So we've had the issue of our handmade chicken waterer in the coop uh, recently. It's been an issue. Over the winter, they jumped on it, which we usually empty it out for the winter and just feed them out of their like portable chicken waterer. Um, just so that we can bring it in the house every night so it doesn't freeze. Uh, but over the winter, they stood on the chicken water that we built and broke off one of like the nipples in the water holder. So Tyler tried to fix it, and within a matter of days, they broke it off again. So we were like, okay, whatever, we'll just tape up that section and just use four instead of four nipples instead of five. Well, Lo and behold, a couple days later, they broke off another one. So it's not working for us, and we need a quick solution because it's starting to get hot. So I decided to just bite the bullet and buy a second water. Now, we have a portable water that's inside of the coop right now. Uh, we have one rooster and five hens, and if you guys follow our page, you know that we have sent a couple roosters to freezer camp and we decided we wanted to try and keep one last one to see if we could have another hen go broody and hatch more eggs this year however our roosters being mean to the girls again so he's gonna have to go but in the meantime we have a water inside the coop because there's one hen that just refuses to come outside with the rooster well now that our outside water isn't working i just went ahead and bought another one so this is a two gallon stainless steel uh, poultry water. Uh, the other one that we have is plastic. We have not a problem with the plastic one, to be honest with you. I just was curious to see what the difference is between the plastic and the metal, so I figured I'd buy a metal one. So we're going to fill this bad boy up and get it out to the coop. Okay, so we're downstairs in the scary basement. <laughs> so, I don't know, I was a little intimidated by the metal one because I was like, how, I don't know how I'm supposed to fill this thing up. It's really easy. <laughs> so there's this little notch here that the top part kind of hooks into so you just slip that off and pull and then it looks something like this this is literally my first time ever using something like this so laugh at me if you will that is fine we can laugh together because i laughed at myself because i was staring at it for a hot second like i don't know how to open this thing <laughs> so we're gonna just fill this up with some cold water and put the lid back on take it out to the chickens I do want to add I rinsed it out really really good whenever you buy something brand new you want to make sure that you wash it out and rinse it really well uh, just because from the manufacturing process it can have different oils and stuff on it so I did give it a good wash down and now we're gonna set it out here they're already curious so the story is is there's this little metal piece here that once you put the lid on it it'll push it in and that's when the water will come out make sure it's on a fairly level surface so that it doesn't overflow it doesn't look like we're overflowing so another trick is that if you really just don't have a level surface in your coop and you don't have the time or the energy to dig something out to make it level just put the opening the spout that the water's coming out 
downhill. Then you'll get a decent amount of water around the rim and it won't overflow. Hey mama, this is the one that doesn't like coming outside with the rooster. She's a little bald on top. So for those of you that may not know or may not have chickens or might just be starting your journey, when the male mates with the female, he will use his beak and grab the back of her head. And so that's why you're seeing a lack of feathers there because he pulls them out. And then his talons tend to dig into their back and so you'll see a loss of back feathers as well, which is why we have a little dress on a lot of our chickens so that he's not able to scratch their skin. He just holds on to a little dress. It's also called a chicken saddle. So I was so excited the other day to get the garden planted and I was on such a mission that I overlooked something that I'm a little disappointed about. Here is my larger bed in the big garden. And if you can notice, the soil is really low. So this was part of the reason why we started doing the compost bins last fall, was that I wanted to refill this bed with homemade compost. Well, what happened was I decided to add two smaller beds over by the greenhouse this year. And when Tyler was filling them, he didn't know my goal for this bed and he used the compost from last fall to fill those beds. So um, we do have compost left, which is what you saw me put in this bed when I was planting it, but it's not quite as broken down yet. So I really don't wanna refill the bed with that. Um, it was okay just adding a little bit to it, but it would be a lot of not broken down materials to add to a bed uh, if we used it. So I noticed that the other day, a little bummed. At this point, there's not much I can do about it because I don't want to choke out what's already planted. Um, there's still a decent amount of soil in here. I mean, everything. there's a chance everything's going to be completely fine. But I did run to the store and they had a couple bags of organic gardening soil at the store two bags left for like six dollars a piece and so I grabbed them they were also marked incorrectly I believe but they gave me the price um, so I grabbed them and I think I'm just going to kind of side dress everything here um, just to add a little bit more soil to this but I think that it's something that's gonna have to be like majorly addressed next year because unfortunately my plants are already in the ground oh speaking of compost so the compost that we did put in this garden bed is bringing forth babies that were not expected to be here. <laughs> Check this out. So here is one of my peppers, my Jimmy Nardello that I planted. These, however, were not supposed to be here. Uh, Tyler said there's a chance that those are watermelons. I'm leaning heavily towards the fact that I think they're all pumpkins. The reason for that being that we did not have watermelons growing the year that we started that compost pile, but we did throw a bunch of pumpkins in there. So what do you guys think? Want to take bets? Are they watermelons or pumpkins? <laughs> so I think what we're going to do is we're going to let them get a little bit bigger and then we're going to pull them out. We're just going to plant them places. I don't know. We've already planted some pumpkins, so it could get a little crazy. But hey, this will be something fun to follow along with, right? Because every single year I have a mystery plant. Every single year I end up with a mystery plant. These plants just tend, just so happen to be ones that are going to take up a ton of space. <laughs> Either way. So let's take bets. What do you guys think it is? So I'm very much for growing and creating and utilizing your own compost. It's Stuff that you already have, I guarantee it. If you just properly process it, you can end up with free compost in your backyard. And it is really easy, especially with us having the chicken coop and cleaning out their bedding every so often, and then any kind of kitchen scraps that we applied to it. And we had some really great compost that we put over in the onion bed and the potato bed. It turned out fabulous. That was the stuff that was under the tarp. I highly suggest doing it. However, know that if you put things in your compost that are and they decompose and they have seeds in them those seeds may germinate and you may end up with surprise plants so this won't be near enough soil to fill up this garden bed and i'm aware of that but it'll be just something to kind of throw in there 
and it was cheap. So I've had this garden cart now for one week and used the daylights out of it. So this is a Gorilla cart. I got it from a garage sale and it is a game changer. The best thing about this Gorilla cart is that I got it from a garage sale. <laughs> Just kidding. Um, no, the best thing about this Gorilla cart is that it'll turn, it'll turn on a dime. And I have loaded it up to where it was like overflowing out of the top and it never spills. Like those tires in this cart can take hills, they can take climbing over things, like it is awesome. Well, those two bags actually went a lot further than I expected them to. I really didn't think we'd make a dent, but... I was able to cover most of it um, and I tried to dig out around the plants. I don't know if this was a good idea or not folks, I really don't, but I didn't like how low the soil was. So this at least gives them more room, I guess, for their roots to grow. Hopefully I didn't choke them out. You can still see them. A lot of my plants are still bitty, so they're there, hope for the best. So see, here's a prime example. I'm like on a hill. Just takes it like a champ, man. Like a champ. It's crazy what this thing can do. I can tell you our wheelbarrows can't do that. And I'm not for darn sure. Tip those things like a million times. Okay, so then I had to also get more potting mixed because um, I got to potting my stuff before Tyler got to potting his stuff and there's not much left over. So I wanted to make sure that he had enough soil for potting his stuff. Also, we like to succession sow a few things. So what does that mean? I'm looking for my chair. We mowed the grass, my chair is gone. Uh, so what is succession sowing? Succession sowing is when you plant one round of plants and then they come to fruition, you pick from them, whatnot. Um, but they're usually plants that have a shorter lifespan, so a shorter turnaround until fruiting. And essentially the concept is, is that by the time that the first round is dying off or not producing as much, you have a second set of plants ready to replace them with so that it's a shorter turnaround time between having a plant that's producing and has died off to having a plant that is producing again. So a big example of this that we started implementing, I think last year or the year before, was our squash and our zucchini. Um, so particularly our eggplants, patty pans, and zucchini squash. Uh, we like to put them in pots because they're e they grow really well in pots on our deck. They're very easy to get to. But the problem is, is that they do tend to bring in squash bugs. And squash bugs just will take out a plant so fast, it's ridiculous. They will, you'll go from seeing one squash bug to overnight seeing 500 of them in your plant being healthy and then dying. Um, so succession sowing has been our way of ensuring that we are getting the most amount of production out of our season. And so that's the other reason for buying more of the potting soil is like I want to have some on hand for the plants that we plan on succession sowing. Plus I also have some plant starts that need to be up potted for sale in our front farm stand. So I'm gonna work outside because the greenhouse is just too darn hot. So what I've got here is I've got just a bunch of these little containers. Um, they don't need to be too big because these plants aren't very big yet, um, but it'll give them a couple yeah, it'll, it'll definitely be fine for a week or so, um, but then you're gonna, we're going to need to up-pot them, um, but we should be selling them by then. So I'm going to just fill these little containers with soil and plop the plants in, make sure I label everything. So over the last few years, I have, I've sold off some of our access plants um, at a little kind of like stand that we have out in the front yard. Which worked out well because we usually had a lot of excess plants. We were still figuring out our garden and figuring out how much space we had and we were constantly adding 
And then uh, this year I had the idea where I wanted to like intentionally set up a stand out front and kind of sell off the stuff that um, we have access of. Ironically enough, this year was the year that I did a really good job planting exactly what we wanted. <laughs> and I really didn't have that much excess left over. However, um, I did also intentionally start plants for the front farm stand, if you will. So we didn't do too bad, but it's just funny that the one year that I was like intentional about wanting to do the, the stand out front was the year we had no leftover plants. All right, so we got all of those up potted. And I put them back in the grow station in the basement um, so that they can just get water and kind of be out of the heat for a little while. And then next we're going to do some of our microgreens. So I've got um, sprouting seeds, let's see, the broccoli and alfalfa here. Uh, these were the ones that we grew, I think it was over the winter as well. So I'm going to go ahead and get them started. So I've got broccoli there on the bottom and then alfalfa in the small trays. I'm just gonna get these nice and moist and then stack them. I have videos on our YouTube channel on how I start my microgreens. So feel free to look back at that if you wanna see the step-by-step -step details. Um, but this is gonna go back into the basement for now. It doesn't need to be under any sunlight until I start to see sprouts. So I actually have them stacked up like this on purpose and I'm gonna keep them that way for the first couple days. So moist, dark, and a little bit of weight on top. Uh, to get those seeds to germinate properly. So up top we have our microgreens and then down here are all of our plant babies for the sale. Well so we've got about 50 plants ready for the plant sale out in the front. Um, we're going to be adding to that as well. We're going to have a few other things like elderberry bushes added to that. Um, possibly some other stuff that we're digging up out of the yard. So like excess herbs like oregano and marjoram. So if you are local, keep an eye out for that. We're planning on hosting it on Saturday, the weekend of Memorial Weekend. So um, if you are local, make sure that you swing by. We would love to see you. Come in uh, and if you watch the channel, don't be afraid to let us know. Like, tell us that you watch the channel and you know us from YouTube. We'll be happy to give you a tour. As always, thank you guys so much for watching, and I look forward to sharing more with you soon.